Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. A semicircle with radius one and an equilateral triangle with side length two are inscribed in a rectangle as shown. Then the two congruent circles with radius r are inscribed, find r. Okay, so we're supposed to find the radius of the, the two circles and we're given that this is a rectangle. So let's go ahead and make some uh, connections here. I'm gonna start by dropping a perpendicular here, like this, right? And then we're going to make more connections. Obviously, you know, in these problems, it's very important to connect the centers of circles. So we do have a semicircle and a circle. So let's go ahead and make that connection. Uh, obviously, that's gonna be uh, super important, right? You would probably agree with that, okay? That's one important connection. And then uh, obviously we wanna make a right triangle here, which we could possibly use like this. And then of course we do need to draw more perpendiculars. So let's go ahead and connect or drop a perpendicular from the center of the circle to one of the sides. And then here another one, which will basically give us the radius, right? In each case. Okay, so we're trying to take advantage of the fact that those lengths are the same. Okay, so this is R, this is R, and this is obviously R as well. We do know that the radius for the semicircle is one, so it's gonna be one minus R, right? Okay, awesome. What else do we know? Well, uh, since this is one and one, right? This is also one. The base is two. Uh, the height is going to be root three, right? For the equilateral, awesome. So that will be helpful as well. I mean, at some point, I guess, right? Are we gonna use it? Um, I'm not sure. I don't think we're gonna use it, but anyways, doesn't matter. So what do we do next? Okay, cool. Now, here's one thing that's really cool. The radius is one here. So this is going to be one, and this is going to be R. So we do have a right triangle, actually. We know the base, we know the hypotenuse. We just get, need to calculate the height in terms of R, and then we can use it. And how do we use it? Well. We can also find the length here from this point to that point. But in order to find that, I'm gonna make one more connection, which is super duper important. Okay, and it's gonna be this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the center of the circle, or I should say one of the circles, right? Connect it, connect it to the uh, vertex. So what am I getting from here? Let's see what happens. So these are R. Now, Notice that this is an equilateral triangle. Even though I'm not necessarily using the height, I'm using the fact that this is equilateral, therefore this is 60 degrees, and you know that this is going to be a complement, which is 30 degrees. But then, from this point, we draw two tangents to the circle, which basically creates two congruent right triangles, which means that these angles are going to be 15 degrees each. And good old trigonometry, is what we're gonna use here, okay? Awesome. So it's gonna be nice. Uh, this problem has a different flavor than others because uh, of the trigonometric approach. Okay, let's see what happens here. So this is 15 degrees, and if I were trying to write the cotangent of 15 degrees, it would be R divided by this piece. So therefore, uh, this is going to be, I'm sorry, not the cotangent, the tangent. Okay, if I was writing the cotangent, it would be this length divided by r, which means that the height here is basically r times cotangent 15 degrees. Awesome. So I know that piece from this point to that point, right? Not the whole thing. And if I can also calculate this one, I'll be good to go. But to calculate that one, we're going to use our right triangle here, okay? All right, so this problem is a little different from the other puzzles. Even though we use the Pythagorean theorem, it's just a little different because of the 15 degrees there. Okay, cool. What am I gonna do here? Uh, let's call this H and let's calculate it. Using the Pythagorean theorem, H is going to be what? Well, H squared plus, and what is the base here? Base is one minus R and the height is, I mean the hypotenuse is one minus plus R, okay. Cool. This, it's going to look like this. 1 minus r squared, and that's going to equal 1 plus r squared, right? So I have h squared plus 1 minus r squared is equal to 1 plus r squared. So from here, what I can do is I can find h in terms of r. And as you know, we do have a nice, 
identity that we can use here. Let's go ahead and subtract them. And you'll probably remember if you subtract, and I'll write it one more time because it's been a while, but we always use this identity. If you subtract these two quantities, you always get 4AB, which is kind of nice, right? Okay, this is very helpful in algebra. So uh, I should be getting from here, I should be getting 4R, which means that H is equal to 2 root R. Beautiful. Now, I was able to find H in terms of R, which is right here. And then I know this length. And I also know that the height here, or yeah, I guess I could say height for the rectangle, right? Would be root 3 plus 1. So here we go. This is when I use the root 3. So I'm using it. Okay. So again, one more time. H, this one, plus R cotangent 15 is equal to 1 plus square root of 3 or square root of 3 plus 1. However, we're going to write. Okay. Let's go ahead and write this down as an equation. H plus R cotangent 15 is equal to square root of 3 plus 1. Awesome. Great, but what's going to make it more awesome is that we know h in terms of r so that we can use substitution. So let's go ahead and use that. Okay, awesome. So now I'm going to replace h with 2 root r. And then at this point, I'd like to substitute something for cotangent 15. Now, there's a couple ways to find cotangent 15. Uh, you can use cotangent 45 minus 30 and then find maybe tangent 15 and then reverse it. Or there's a cooler way to do it, which I'm going to show you right now. And I think we've used this in another problem. Or maybe it was pi over 8. I'm not exactly sure. But if this is 30 degrees, you get 1, root 3, and 2. Now, here's the trick. Extend the base as much as the hypotenuse. And what are you getting? You're getting a 15, 15, 150 triangle. Therefore, you can find cotangent 15 very easily. What is cotangent 15? It is the adjacent over opposite, which is square root of 3 plus 2. Awesome. Or you can write it as 2 plus root 3 because 2 is greater than root 3. So it might be more beneficial if you write it that way. And let me just mention here quickly that tangent 15 is just going to be uh, the reciprocal of this, which can be written as 2 minus root 3. So those are really good, nice values that you should remember, or at least you should know how to come up with them. Okay, great. So we're pretty much there, but let's go ahead and work this out, and you're going to get a really nice answer from here. That's going to be real cool. Well, first of all, notice that this is not linear, so I got to do some work. And what does that lo work look like? Well, I got to isolate the radical first. Let's go ahead and do that. And then from here, I'm not getting a nice expression, unfortunately, but it's okay. We can handle this, right? Okay, cool. So this is what I'm getting. Now, at this point, you want to get rid of the radical. I mean the square root of r, not the numbers. Uh, so it, it would make sense if you actually go ahead and square both sides. It would make a lot of sense, right? Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So that should give me 4r. And this expression, now, even though it looks like there is four terms, you can treat it as a minus b, like this. Okay, let's do that. Uh, a squared minus 2ab, right? Plus b squared. Oh, so it's going to be 2 plus root 3 squared times r squared. Beautiful. So what I need to do here is maybe simplify this expression first, right? So I can go ahead and expand uh, the square root of 3 plus 1 quantity to squared. It's going to be 3 plus 1, which is 4, plus 2 root 3, minus. Then these two expressions can actually be multiplied, but let's keep the two outside first. And let's go ahead and distribute. But notice that what we get from here is going to be interesting. 2 root 3 plus 1 root 3. It's going to be 3 root 3. And then we're getting two numbers, 2 plus 3, which is 5. So that should give me 5, right, plus Root 2 root 3 plus root 3 is 3 root 3. Okay, that's what I'm getting. And of course, that's multiplied by r. And then if I square this, just like this one, it would be uh, 4 plus 3, which is 7, plus 4 root 3 multiplied by r squared. Okay, awesome. Now, we do get a quadratic, which is not very nice, but it's okay. 
let's put the r squared first so it should look like this r squared and then this is r so i can just go ahead and you know distribute the two so it's going to look like 10 plus 6 root 3. Uh, oh by the way we forgot to do one thing but we'll probably do that next bring over the 2r here because it's a uh, uh, it needs to be on the other side so minus 4r obviously we brought that over we've taken care of this we've taken care of this now we got to take care of that since it's on the same side so it's going to stay as is 4 plus 2 root 3 and the whole thing is equal to zero okay what am i getting from here uh well i can arrange this a little bit more 7 plus 4 root 3 multiplied by r squared now i'm subtracting 4 from this so that should look like 10 minus 4 which is 6 then I get 6 plus 6 root 3 uh, times r, right? Plus 4 plus 2 root 3. A lot of radicals, right? Okay, cool. But this can be solved, obviously, and we're going to solve it with the quadratic formula. Notice that there are two solutions, but only one of them is acceptable. And uh, it depends on the size of the number. But let's go ahead and write both of them first, and then I'll tell you which one is going to be good. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, okay, minus 4ac, okay? This is also kind of like a good review of, I think, quadratic formula. All over 2 times a, which is 14 plus 8 root 3. Awesome. So once I simplify this expression, I'll get my answer. And uh, I'm actually going to give you a break here, and instead of walking you through all these steps, which are basically very straightforward. I'm just going to give you the answer here. So I'll save some time. So after some manipulations and simplifying and factoring and so on and so forth, you're going to be getting a really nice expression at the end. And let me tell you, we're going to use the minus version because the, the, pos, the plus one is going to give you a very large number, which can't be the radius of the circle. It's actually going to exceed um, the boundaries of this rectangle. Okay, so here's our answer. 13 minus 7 root 3. Actually, I probably need to write it this way, right? I can possibly do this. Okay, so it's going to be look, it's going to look like this basically. 13 minus 7 root 3 minus 2 times the square root of 78 minus 45 root 3. Okay, you might be wondering how this simplifies like that. Well, you can just go ahead and do the work yourself and you'll see what happens. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, and if you haven't subscribed yet, do subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.